If you want to learn how to use noises like to control your computer, this video is for you. Today we're going to be setting up Parrot.py and integrating it with Talon. Just a heads up that this feature requires you to be on the beta tier of Talon, which does come with a monthly fee. It's a great cause, Ryan is doing amazing work, but just a heads up. Link in the description below. Parrot.py was actually originally developed independently of Talon by someone named Chaos Parrot, who used it for gaming. There's some awesome videos of him crushing some video games using just noises. Here's a link. In order to use Parrot, you need to train Parrot on the noises that you want to make. The really cool thing is that you can use literally any noise you want. When the creative Parrot first demoed it to me, he just showed off clicking a pen and using that as his noise. Note that some noises tend to work better than others with Parrot. You might want to try a few. I personally find that that noise works really well for me, as well as there's an amazing YouTube channel called Glossica Phonics, which has video, instructional videos for how to pronounce hundreds of different sounds with your mouth. So it can be a good place to go for inspiration to find out sounds that work. And it's also worth checking in the Slack to see if other people have experience with using a given sound. I'll drop a link to their playlists in the, in the description below. One thing to keep in mind is that you can't choose a sound which is a sound used in English. Because the problem is that then when you're speaking to Talon, Parrot will also try to use that sound. So if you try to use a sound like k k k k k that's not gonna work because then when you say kick, then Parrot is going to trigger that. So that's why it's helpful to use something like Glossica Phonics to find sounds which don't exist in the English phoneme library. Notably, are both sounds that don't exist in English, so you can speak comfortably without worrying about triggering Parrot. Let's start off by installing Parrot. There are installation instructions on the repository, so make sure to read through them if you run into trouble, but more or less what it comes down to is clone the repo. If you're on a Mac, you're gonna wanna install the Pi Audio dependencies. So that's brew install port audio. I already have that done, so I'm not going to do that here. Now let's change directory into the newly cloned repo. And let's set up a virtual environment just so that we don't pollute our global Python installation with the packages we need for Parrot. Activate the virtual environment. Okay, cool. The virtual environment is activated. Let's install the requirements. Note, if you're on Windows, you're gonna to wanna to use requirements Windows. We'll use requirements POSIX because we're on a Mac. Okay, requirements are installed, and now let us see if things are working. So basically the way that things work with Parrot is that you do python settings.py in order to train, okay? Okay, and this is the interface for interacting with Parrot. Um, it's fairly minimal, um, but it does the job. So the first step we're going to do is record. Now, in addition to the sound, so you want to figure out what sounds you're going to record. Um, start, I would start with one or two. Um, and in addition to the sounds that you want to use to drive Talon, you need to record two more sounds. You need to record speech and you need to record background noises. Now note that those won't actually be used to control Parrot. The reason you need to rec record those is because Parrot trains what's called a discriminative classifier. Which means that let's say you only gave it one noise, the noise that you're looking for, the classifier will just always predict that noise because that gives it 100% accuracy. So what you need to do is say, tell the classifier, these are the things which are not my noise, okay? So you're gonna, we're gonna train a category which is called background noises and another category which is called speech. And we just tell Parrot, don't do anything when you hear those, but you need to learn how to discriminate between speech and background noise. And you wanna be able to discriminate that against the actual sounds that we're making. You could probably combine background noise and speech into one category, but I always like to make them separate. So let's hit R to start recording. Okay, you can pick your mic. Um, yep, let's use this Yeti mic that I have plugged in. So let's press enter. Note you can record on multiple mics at a time. Not a bad idea to do that, um, just so that you get some extra data. So now you gotta name the sound. 
let's call this, so I'm going to do the popping noise. I call that alveolar click. This threshold for loudness, I usually do about 10,000 for this, um, but you'll learn what your noise, noise floor is. Uh, we'll, we'll see in a second. I don't bother with frequency threshold. Maybe other people use it. Okay, so now we'll see the noise floor. Okay, you can press space to, to pause recording. Notice there that, so if we scroll back here, right, we can see it's not hearing any noise. Okay, I've switched to a different terminal. So it turns out that the terminal you're using on a Mac needs to have access to your microphone. And for some reason, the terminal that I was using, an otherwise great terminal called Alacrity, doesn't seem to ask for permissions for some reason. So instead, I have switched to the built-in system terminal. Okay, you see here, it's um, actually working now, right? Before it was all zeros. And you can see here, it's showing you the power thresholds. So as you can see, 10,000 is above all of these. So the noise floor is below this threshold. Notice it heard me hit that space bar though. Uh, so um, so 10,000 might be a bit low uh, because I can't even stop and start it with, with that. It's gonna be mic dependent, right? So on my other mic, which tends to um, cut out uh, background noise better, I can use a lower threshold. Here it's looking like 10,000 is too low. So let's go ahead and up that to, to 15. So I'm gonna press escape, X to exit setup, and then I'm going to remove uh, the recording directory for that sound. Now, you don't wanna do this once you have real sounds, but we don't yet. So I'm happy to just go ahead and remove that. Data slash recording slash alveolar click. I'm just gonna get rid of that, okay? Let's run again. Okay, 15,000. Okay, looks like I can pause and resume without um, going above that noise floor. So notice it's not recording any sounds while it's below the floor. Let's start making noises. Okay, so let's see what's going on here, right? So you can see here, this number right here is the total number of files recorded, right? So when it's under the threshold, that number is staying constant. Now notice each time I make a noise, it's capturing a bunch of little slices from that noise, right? So that single sound is generating here eight training points, right? So Parrot listens in 30 millisecond slices, okay? So a single sound will be sliced up a bunch, which is why Parrot is so snappy, right? Because Parrot will sometimes start recognizing within the first 30 milliseconds of you making the sound. So sometimes it even feels like you're it's responding before you've even started making the sound almost. So you can see here, each of these are generating data points. So notice, I generated 190 data points in, I don't know, that was like 30 seconds. Um, generally speaking, you want at least 5,000 data points. And then if you're if the sound is working, you'll know. Um, it'll generally work pretty well already at that point or very well already at that point. And then if you like the sound, you can 10 to 15,000 is if you really want to be confident in a sound. That applies both for the noises you're gonna make and also for background and speech, okay? Another thing is you generally wanna have roughly the same number of data points per, per sound. That's just a machine learning thing um, to make it a well-balanced classifier. I'm gonna go ahead and record a bunch more instances of that sound. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is you want the sound to be as similar as possible to how you're going to make it when you're actually working or, or, or you know, using it. So 
you know, if you get a little bit tired, um, then you're going to make the sound slightly differently. That's okay. Um, because as long as it's realistic, right? So, so as they say in machine learning, garbage in, garbage out, right? So you want to make sure you have good, a good sample of exactly what you're going to be making. So, you know, if you're getting all sorts of weird background noises in there, um, you know, take a look and make sure it's only recording things when you're actually making the noise, because otherwise the classifier is going to have a terrible time trying to predict what's going on, right? So you can see it was actually doing it as I was making the noise. That's pretty good. Let's get a few more sounds in there. So I just did a thousand there. Let's see how well that works. Like I said, you usually want 5,000, maybe a few thousand is, is okay. Um, but let's see what a thousand does, okay? So we've now recorded um, a thousand of that. So let's press escape to get out of recording that one. Let's record another sound. So this one is going to be speech. Um, so same microphone. Um, as mentioned, you can do multiple microphones at the same time. Not necessarily a bad idea to get just more data. Um, and this one will be called speech. Okay. And um, let's do uh, that same 15,000 power threshold, no frequency threshold. And then basically the way it works is that I'm just going to be talking and it's going to listen to my speech as I'm talking. And you can see it's picking up training data of me speaking. Now, usually you would probably what you could do is just leave this on and then just run Talon and just start voice coding. Okay, I'm going to do just a thousand there um, just to make make sure we have a balanced classifier. Again, you know, if I had um, 5,000 the other one, I would want roughly 5,000 of this one. Great. Um, now we're going to do one which is called background noises. Okay. Let's do that same 15,000 threshold. No frequency. Okay. Now for background noises, um, this is a category which you are going to be continually improving. Um, so basically what you do is you just f at first try to make noises that you kind of expect. Like, well, so you can just try and capture things that are happening in your background. I did, when you're training initially, like, you know, if you're training other noises, you don't want background noises so that they, cause they're going to pollute the noises you're trying to capture. So, um, but what you can do is go into an environment. So if you're going to be spending a lot of time voice coding from cafes like I do, then you can just go to the cafe, turn on recording and just sit there and just watch the noises come in. Right. For example, I had a noise which for whatever reason, whenever the, the barista would use the milk frother, no matter where I was in the cafe, it would trigger that noise. Uh, and so what I did is I just sat there and let it collect um, examples of that noise. And I labeled them as background noise so that the classifier would, would know specifically to reject that. Right. And so, you know, you're not going to be able to capture every noise possible, but you can get pretty good. Um, so, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to like bang around, like, you know, touch things and, you know, you, you may find banging pots and pans or, or whatever. Um, so, so let's make some background noises. Definitely make sure to capture some breathing and background noises because you don't want that triggering your sounds. All right, there's the thousand. Um, great. So now we have three categories. Um, so, you know, you could train in a couple other categories if you want. But to start, we're just going to have an alve alveolar click, which you can already use to great effect. Like, for example, just that single noise I use to wake Talon. And then when Talon's running, I use it to repeat. Having a repeater noise is an absolute game changer. And honestly, even to this day, um, I really only use two noises. Um, I would love to use more. I haven't gotten around to training more, so that doesn't mean you won't necessarily use more. But even with those two noises, one to, to wake Talon, 
one to repeat, and then I have another one for canceling the command I'm currently doing. Just those two commands, right? Just those two single noises are huge. So let's start with one. Okay, um, so great. We have our recordings now, right? So now what we're gonna wanna do is actually train a classifier, okay? So that's gonna be L for learning the data. Um, fine. Okay, so let's call this my Talon model. Um, might be a good idea to put a date on it. Okay, uh, you always wanna use A for AudioNet. As you can see, it says required by Talon Voice. <laughs> okay, um, I usually train five to 10 nets I don't know, people disagree about how many you need. It's a bit like it, it uses more CPU to use more, but um, it generally, uh, ha having more nets tends to result in slightly better predictions. I generally go with five. Okay, and so here you have to tell it which categories to use. So, you know, maybe if you had a bunch of different noises, you don't want to use all of them. Obviously, we're just going to use all of them for, for this. Okay, and it's training. Um, this should go on the faster side because we have um, not too much data. Um, so you can see here, accuracy is already at 83%. 83.7 so you want accuracy to go up obviously and validation loss to go down okay um, and so you just kind of watch right as it's going uh, to see these numbers keep moving and it's as it's going it's taking checkpoints and recording the the best model so far you can see it's going up pretty quickly um, 87.2 87.5 so I think this runs for like 300 epochs um, and we've done um, 16. So you can just sort of let this run while you do something else. 